everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. We're back. Um, yes, there was no Webtoons on Friday. It's because, like I said, I've uh, been pretty busy. Uh, it'll be out this week, though, so don't worry about that. And in the meantime, we do have an email. And it's from the boy Mark. Uh, he says he's been busy, but that's because he has a new full-time job. So congrats, man. It's great. Congratulations. Good shit, Mark. He's got a couple questions here, uh, one of them being, I didn't know about this, uh, but he says uh, that FF14's MMO story is going to be ending, and like you reminded me, Adam, right, because the writer's going to FF16. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's going to be his main focus, and uh, I think Endwalker is going to be the last expansion for 14, which is good. I mean, right now it's been getting a lot of traction, and like I think their servers were even full at one point over the last couple weeks. Ugh, I have to hop into it at some point soon. Yes, yeah, so, so that's his question. He's like, have you guys been curious uh, enough to check out the cutscenes or play the game and all that stuff? And um, I'm interested because I think FF14 is the one with the uh, near crossover stuff, right? Yeah. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, and those crossover events are canon to the near story. So that's why I was like, oh, I should probably Ooh, check this out that's eventually. That's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've been hearing it over on Castle Super Beast Ends with Pat, and he's been saying all nothing but good things uh, from the 14 expansions. Um, like, the, the main writer that's leaving to do 16, when he hopped in to do the expansions, like he's just like, oh, they've been great ever since. Yeah, I know that 14 was like on the floppy side for a while, and ever since he stepped in, it's just been fantastic. So I have really uh, high hopes for it. I think it'll be a good time once I hop into it, but that then means that everything else gets put on hold for a long time <laughs> yeah it's it's really expansive especially now because it's like end game i actually did play it i played the um uh what is it like the 14 day free trial that they give out uh i played it i think when i got my ps4 i want to say a couple of years ago maybe like two three four years ago it was like before i came over here um but yeah it was cool uh, I wanted to be like the. They had a lot of classes available, which I thought was one of the most immediate things that like you would enjoy about the game, is that there aren't there is really like no wrong options, especially like for whatever it is that you want to do or how far you want to take it. Um, there's a lot of lore, uh, definitely lots of uh, components to everything in every class that you pick. So like you can be from like X race and like start in one of these like six starting points. And then have like a like a specific class that lets you or that takes you to a different starting point, you know, like later on through the game or whatever the case is, you know. So a lot of that was really cool. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think I pretty much uh, was playing it right before the first or second expansion came out, the Shadowbringers or whatever that was. It was really cool. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Um, MMOs, uh, especially like FF14. And, like, I want to say, like, older ones, like World of Warcraft and stuff. That wasn't really, like, my biggest thing because I wasn't really into, like, the paid subscription stuff. Um, but, I mean, like, obviously it's got its quality to it. And I had a good friend, um, you know, that was really into it, still into it, like, for a really long time. He tells me about, like, all the end game raids and, like, his clan and, like, all this other stuff that you have to do. So he showed me some stuff about the game. It's pretty lit. Um, definitely worth checking out. And then, um, yeah, I would say, like, if you're one of those kind of people, you definitely need to at least get to Endgame or do a raid or two in order to like fully utilize and see how well the game is when it comes to like you know like the dungeon aspect of things. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. And I know Carl was playing it for a while, and he said it was really, really good. So, so I definitely need to check it out. Uh, right on, man. Yeah. So that pulls up to his uh, follow-up question. What is something that has been out, but you only gave it a chance now? Uh, any form of media, really. Uh, for his example, it was FF14. Since it was an MMO, he ignored it. But the music's fantastic. The story's great. And he didn't think uh, FF11 or 15 were all that good either. But for sure, it's Yakuza right off the bat. Mainly because I kept buying them, right? And I was like, I should probably start this now. And then when 7 came out, I'm like, oh, it's the perfect time to hop in, finish Kiryu's story, and then see what to do from there. I'm definitely agreeing with Danny. Yakuza, for sure. You know, it's probably one of my favorite franchises now. Next would probably be Xenoblade Chronicles, because I know Grant had told me about it for years, and I never really gave it a shot, but I saw it on sale somewhere, and I was like, oh, I'll pick it up. And I mean, I still need to go back into it, but the game is fantastic. The music is incredible. 
the mechanics are really really cool you know it's it it feels like what i would want a tales game to be at some point you know but it's just it's just a good time did you try tales of of, of arise by the way no i haven't tried a demo yet i did i know i saw some clips on twitter and it just looks amazing i, I really did get into it uh honestly not not really yakuza because i did play yakuza like as soon as i got it for free because i was just like let me try this out but i more or less was like that towards the final fantasy 7 remake i got it for free for a while and i didn't play it and then like as time was going on you know and they were talking about like how it differs from final fantasy 7 that kind of really put put me off from playing it because i had already played the original final fantasy 7 and i'm like okay if it's not the same then it's not canon it doesn't matter to me you know what I mean? But, like, on a whim, I decided to, like, give it a try, like, I want to say, like, maybe two months ago, like, out of boredom. And, um, yeah, like, honestly, it was a really good game, and it, it does defer, uh, uh, like, story-wise. But all the same, I think that this story is, honestly, it's, it's equally as good. Other than, I want to say one of my favorite franchises, I was kind of like that for a while, it was Monster Hunter. Like, I remember I had seen so many things about Monster Hunter and then playing, like, uh, was it Freedom Unite when it was on the PSP? That was, like, my first ever introduction to Monster Hunter. And I remember, like, trying it out for, like, the first week or two. I had absolutely no idea what I was doing because I wasn't aware of, like, all the, like, the gathering stuff that you have to do. Like, just the essential gathering crafting component part of the game. Like, that, that part wasn't, like... I wasn't aware of that and it wasn't like really obvious to you like they didn't this was back in the day where the games didn't have like permanent tutorials that were just always going to show up no matter what so it was just really something that you really had to get to so i probably deleted it and then picked it up again like six months eight months later when i like kind of heard more about monster hunter and i was like oh like oh i get it that's how this works craft and then go back home and then put stuff away oh i get that okay yeah cool now we're now we're good now it's like i can't stop playing it i actually just downloaded the rise demo today because I hadn't tried that out either. Other stuff, like, of course, recently was No More Heroes, getting into that super late uh, because of the hype for 3, and that was a great time. Uh, Uncharted, I started uh, pretty late, too. Like, I always knew about it, but I the only thing I really touched was the demo for 3 at a GameStop. And then I got a really good deal on Uncharted 4, and I thought, well, I guess I should start the series since I have the last game <laughs> that's out right now. Yeah, by the way, let me, I wanted to ask you. I was not aware that No More Heroes is just around the corner. It's going to come out yeah, on Friday. Yeah, I think it's like this week. <clears throat> is it Friday or is it Monday? It's Friday the 27th is what I... I, double, I double-checked a couple times. Yeah, I have to go through No More Heroes 2 and Travis Strikes again because I didn't play those yet. Yeah, I have to finish Travis Strikes again because there is stuff from that game that carries on to 3. Some of it's, like, story stuff, like, what's her name? Uh, I guess it's just Lady, I think, from the first game. She's back, and I think that happens in Travis Strikes Again, uh, which makes sense for the uh, the main characters of that game. You talking about Bad Lady? Yeah, her. Yeah, Bad Lady. There's also, like, mechanics that they added from Strikes Again into the into Travis's gameplay. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, but no, yes, I am very excited for that game. I've been keeping away from... All the stuff that's been coming out for it, just because I don't want to get spoiled. Just a quick glimpse at like some of the gameplay here and there. I was like, oh yeah, this looks great. This looks the best it's ever been. So I'm very excited for that. Yeah, and I will be streaming that uh, when it comes out. So that will be yeah this week. I thought it was the 30th for some reason, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not interested in Travis Strikes Again. Like I'm just really into it for like the gameplay in itself. Yeah, and that's that's why I've put off Strikes Against so much is because it's not the same gameplay, right? It's it's a very different game. Just that first hour I played, I'm like, this doesn't feel fun like the other games. I'll, I'll play it eventually, and well, we're already here at three, so I'm like, damn, I guess I have to crunch down on it. Um, but if not, I'll just go through the story, like watch some some videos on it. Last question we have here from the email is, uh, what is a piece of media that you guys love or hate by either your friends or the masses love or hate and you just can't understand why or their viewpoint? Air gear. Does air gear get hate, though? It does. Too etchy. And, like, people won't go and read past the anime, which, like, that's where it starts getting so much better. That sounds like a Shokugeki thing, too, because it's too etchy. But just both of those series, when you get deep into it, like, the etchiness sort of They're fades so away. Good. 
Yeah, exactly. Like, it's yeah. not even there anymore. Yeah. I mean, Shogugeki, it's still there, but it's not the main focus anymore. But yeah, his example was, he says he loves part five, but for some reason, everyone doesn't like it, which I was telling you all earlier, Adam, like, I don't everybody loves part five, right? Like, isn't it like majority? Love you don't that like one? part five. Don't lie. I don't like part five, but I know most JoJo fans like part five. Like, Japan loves it for sure. Yeah. I don't like Skypea or Alabasta. You really don't like Skypea? I, I don't know. Wait, don't you don't know like Alabasta? Everybody likes it. No, yeah, I don't dude. like Alabasta oh, either. Whoa. You about to get flamed, bro. Okay, wait, okay, wait. Uh, okay, I, I, I was, I, I was going to sit it. with you. I was going to sit Bring with you it. on Skypea, but Alabasta... Just... Nah, dude. The only good thing about Alabasta is Vivi and, and Nico Robin. What? So you yeah. didn't like anything about Alabasta, is what you're saying? The, I, didn't, I didn't like too many things about Alabasta. So uh, overall, the average is a no. Okay, for sure. And, and you know what? You know what? I'm not going to... There's I'm no, sorry, dude. It's fucking. No, yo, don't it's, apologize. It's just, man, we, we all got our preferences, apologize. you know. Exactly. I'm sorry, I'm right, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Now, now Ooh, you should apologize. Buddy. That's different. Without without hesitation, like I don't have to fight or argue with anybody when they say I don't like Alabasta. I already know why you don't like Alabasta. It was the same reasons why most of us didn't like some things from Alabasta. Yeah, you're crazy, man. I don't know why you wouldn't like Alabasta. Yeah, I, I don't know why everybody likes it though. I, th- I think there's great fights. But that's not. Oh, today. don't get me wrong. That's, that's fucking. When when Zoro uses his hockey for like the first time there yeah. against Mister Mister One. Yeah, that was that was that was, that was, that, was that was that was legit. Yeah, but like everything else, I'm I could do without the dog cannon. You don't like the fun part no. of, of Oda's writing there. No, dude. Okay. That's not fun, dude. That's why you don't. Uh, that's I, why you don't is, like Skypea, huh? Bro, there's a revolution going on. <laughs> okay, the only thing I'll give about Skypea <laughs> is that I, I'm a fucking. I have a, such a hard on for anything like. With, electricity or lightning so and now was, was pretty much up there for me and then the fact that like rubber doesn't work the rubber like negates electricity i'm like dude that's fucking this is exactly what i wanted but the fact that he went to the moon i'm like all right so th- this whole thing just became shitty for me where did you think that he went because he did say that he's from the moon he didn't say he's from the moon he said he's going to the moon yeah he no, might be there. He, he is there. He, he, he reached terminal velocity and just broke the fucking... The, the, the uh, you're adding logic to it. I see. Okay. He said, wait, what was it? The Varya from the moon is like the same kind of Varya from from wherever he's from? No, his goal what? his goal was never to go to the moon. <laughs> he only went to the moon after he lost. <clears throat> yeah, he got sent to the moon. That was, that's... Sent? To, no, he went to... No, dude, he went, he bro. Went Nobody yeah, he, told he, him his, to go? His fucking arc, like, sent him there, bro. Like, Luffy didn't punch him or nothing. He just, like, fuck it. Yeah. And that was, like, later, bitch. And then we see him hanging out with the rabbits on the moon. Oh, uh, I was thinking that that golden bell thing that he did knocked him straight out of orbit. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be like, cool. I, I can't remember that far. I'm sorry. I, I just couldn't remember that far back. But, but, yeah, like, his fucking arc broke the atmosphere in whatever fucking That's your world. problem. Not Earth. No, dude. I just the the whole fact that he actually is gone. He's actually gone. He's didn't. He's not coming back. Like, yeah, he won't I would love back. to see him come back, dude. I would love to see him come back and just do some new shit. He'll be back eventually. That's what I believe. I hope so, dude. I was hoping he would pop up uh, in Wano. Like that'd be just some wild shit. Like if he just showed up. I, there's things I don't like, and I know why people like him. There, there's very few things where I'm like, I don't understand why people like it. Yeah, like I don't like Demon Slayer, but I know why people love it. Uh, the Marvel shows, I don't like most of it, but I know why people like it. Well, thanks, Mark, for the email. Appreciate it. And that is unversepodcast at gmail.com. So let's hop in, man. Um, yeah, we, we were talking JoJo stuff. Uh, part 8 ended. Uh, we will do a spoiler cast at some point, uh, probably in September. And uh, with the ending of Part 8, we got the confirmation that Part 9 is happening. It's called Jojo Lands. It's going to be starting this winter after a short break with Araki here. And then also announced a spinoff with Josuke and Whole Horse. No way. Yeah. And uh, Josuke, it's Part 4, not Part 8. But the spinoff thing's interesting because it's being written and drawn by other people that are not Araki. Is it gonna be like Rohan in uh, in Paris? Oh, R- 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 Rohan at the Louvre. Yeah, we didn't get any details because uh, I was like Josuke and Whole Horse. Like, why would they come together and do? Yeah, a that's thing? a weird combo. Yeah, but yeah, it's different writers, so who knows what's gonna happen? If if anything, I'm gonna guess short story stuff. 
So, so is he just is Araki just supervising it, like how Kishimoto was supervising uh, Boruto? For a while um, I hope I hope so because I don't want to see another George Joestar uh, situation. If you guys remember that. Oh right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Where there's like 36 cars on Mars and Poochie traveled oh, yeah. like traveled it through time like 36 times or something. <laughs> yeah. Best timeline. Best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, wasn't that the one where Dio's stand was Jesus in part one? I think so. I think that's where that came from, too, yeah. So I'm hoping this spinoff it won't be like that. This is going to be, yeah, one of the very few spinoffs that's not written by Araki. And, um, yeah, I hope he is supervising it, like, during this. I wonder if it'll pop out, like, during this break. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Jojo Lance, huh? It's a cool name. I like it. I would be fine if that's the end. I like that shit we got at the end. That was pretty cool. Do we get to see his four testicles and two um, two penises? They're pretty big. Somebody saw them. How the hell are we gonna wrap up? Considering the last the chapter before right. this started a flashback, but it it was fine. There, there wasn't really much to do uh, in the present day, I guess. That flashback stuff, I feel like, has to be built up to what JoJo Lands is going to be focusing on, right? Or at least touching on. But yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll get that uh, spoiler cast out soon, guys. We'll let you know on the main episodes and all that good stuff. Moving on, man. Uh, hype news for the new Super Monkey Ball game coming out October. Guest character Kazuma Kiryu is hopping in the game. Hell yeah, dude. When I saw that Kiryu was in it, I was like, oh yeah, no, we, we definitely got to get this game for sure. I saw that they replaced all the bananas with the, the stamina. Staminins. Yeah, yeah. this is the stamina X. Yeah, and it, it was it was playing the Kiwami uh, fight music. That was I was like, oh, that's great. I'm sorry, I was gonna say I like that meme that's been going around with uh, Kazuma and uh, Cynthia from Pokemon. Oh, that's oh, great. Dude, that shit's great. Yeah, I, I, I like that one you shared, Danny, with with was the dragon on his back and he <laughs> the ball. It's fucking true. <laughs> it's the super monkey ball instead of the yeah. the kanji. Yeah, yeah. You know that that this made me think like. Man, if only if Yakuza was popular, like, really popular like it is now, back in the day, Kiryu could have been on, like, Sonic All-Star Racing or something. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. You know, we could have seen him in a bunch of other crossover games. I'm sorry, but Kiryu and driving is just a big no. He'd be in a little pocket circuit thing. Come on. Dude. Oh, fuck dude, yeah. Now that you sold so me. Cool. You sold me. <laughs> Did you guys end up finishing that sub-story? That's such a great sub-story. Fuck yeah. Uh, I might have. I beat, if you beat the Pocket Racer, that's it, right? Uh, the pocket master, yeah, yeah. The pocket racer. Did he give you a purple one? Did he give you like a purple cart? I don't remember. I, I remember he I, he was the last one I beat, and after that, like, there wasn't really anybody else. So you'll know that. Well, well, technically, he is the last person you fight, but you fight him twice. So the first time you fight him, oh yeah, fight, I beat him. He yeah, gives fuck you the yeah, thing, and then you fight him again. Yeah, it's a good time. It's yeah, fucking was, hard, dude. That shit. It's it's so it's so good though. <laughs> it gets intense because one of the hardest things about about doing that sub story is you you need to rely on RNG to do um, to get the gears from the the million dollar vending machines. Oh yeah, like and like at least in Z, Yakuza Zero for Yakuza One, um, I think if it was Kiwami, you just had to talk to Bob, uh, Bob the Clown or whatever his name is, and he already had like uh, some motor parts and gear parts for you. Mm-hmm. You could just kind of, like, beat the shit out of all those kids. I think my favorite part about the sub story is making those kids cry. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Wow, Oscar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, I, they I, cry with excitement, guys, not with, with salty tears. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going back and forth with the sub stories in Yakuza. Like, I did one. I did. All, I tried doing them all for Zero, and then uh, I'm trying to do them all for Kiwami 2. Yeah, good luck, man. Are yeah, you still on Yakuza 2? Kiwami 2. Yeah, that's where you're on right now. Yep. Kiwami 2. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm on 3. It's been um, it's been a wild ride. Uh, the sub-stories in 3 aren't like in Kiwami and Kiwami 2 and 0. Like, they don't give you, like, any sort of, like, um, sub-story meter ring or whatever. You know, the little gauge thing. You just pretty much have to be diligent. Like, after every cutscene, you have to, like, double-check. Go back into town. You know, uh, talk to the same person two or three times. So, like, uh, the sub-stories are good, um, but most of them are... They don't really have, like, a lot of good payouts, like in the other games. I'll let you know that much. But so far, Yakuza 3 has been pretty good. I haven't 
I think I'm like more than halfway through the game at this point. Just wait till you get to like I think it's like chapter ten, Oscar. It's all dialogue, and that shit gets fucking wild. Because I was on the fence about Yakuza three until I got to that chapter, and I was like, never mind, I'm back in. That's a pretty long while to be on the fence. That's more than halfway through the game. You oh, did you? Played yeah. and staying on that kind of feeling. But I was like, I'm still going to beat the game, you know, I'm still going to play it through. But it just, I was on the fence because I was like, I don't really like it. I hate the whole block is a thing, you know, aspect about it. And But after that, I was like, no, I'm good. I like this. A friend told me about that, too, with the with the blocking. And I do see it with a lot of these with a lot of these enemies. I'll tell you what really sold it for me, though. Like, the one reason why I had to take a break from this game, I could not, am not able to adapt to the whole chase mini game that they added. Like, I fucking Oh, dude, that, that shit's so much fun. Oh, the running uh, one? Oh, my God. Yeah, I, like, to, me, so much look, to me, that I'm horrible at that shit, dude. Like, it takes me... I don't know if you remember, like, the, the sub-story with the fat guy who, like, is, like, doing the uh, the dine and dash. It yeah, took yeah, me, like, yeah, it took me It took me legit eight tries to catch this fat fuck. And, like, I had <laughs> I had, had Grant help me do it because I was like, I can't. Like, I just, this, is all, this is all fucked for me. They they do get easier, though. In 4, they get a lot easier. Yeah, they do. Because you yeah. have to... You have to go through them a lot more in four, and they're they're a lot easier. There's a lot more stuff you can pick up, and they last a good while. Yeah, how you like Kiwami too, Jerry? It's fun. Um, I'm not ready for Kiwa- uh, Blockaza because I'm having such a great time on this one. I really like what they did with his fighting styles. Um, I do miss switching between Rush and uh, and Beast. But I really like how they kind of incorporated everything, and I like how you can charge the hits when people are being assholes and blocking all my punches. Um, that shit helps, especially with bosses, because I'm kind of swimming through bosses right now. Plus, I like the whole eating aspect. I fucking love that. Um, Dude, it's so easy oh, yeah, to level up the, in there because of that. I yeah, that. bro. Like, you, if, if I want, do yeah. If I really wanted to, I could probably just farm that for a long time. Just just go like eat shit uh go back to the the pharmacy buy all the app the the appetite yep. stimulants yep that's exactly what i did actually and drink that's... all of that and then just fucking do, do that all again. yeah uh i would do that in um what is it sarutobi because the there's a shop uh sotenbori yeah sotenbori sorry it's the restaurant all the way in the corner on the upper half of of the city um i want to say it's like uh, that restaurant right on the corner, right right as you're on the bridge on like the east side of town. Uh, that place will power up your attack. It'll power up your uh, heat, and I think one more the stamina one, if I remember correctly. And it's just like you said, Jerry. Just basically go over and again and just grab the stamina drugs because they're like literally right down the street. Yeah, but like I have what five more games of Yakuza, so I'm I'm like. I'm trying to farm as least as possible. Yes. But yeah. also, like, level up quick. So it's like... It, it took me, like, maybe... Ah, oh, damn, I'm still on the fucking... Hey, yeah, I need to move. <laughs> this chapter... These, I'm still probably really early in the chapters. Because I've just been, like... Once I figured out how to play, I've been be- in between, like, main missions. I've been hitting up um, the restaurants and shit. And uh, whatever I use, whatever I have in my, in my freaking inventory, I use. I'm, I fucking buy everything because I, I really like how they sorted out the inventory. You can only carry like ten max of of each, and instead of like just fuck you amounts, I got sold into the the cabaret. Um, yes, I'm lost. I'm lost now, guys. So I'm stuck on this for a while. It's the best place to be lost in. It's a good it's... way to get some money too. It's so much fucking money though to hire oh new ones. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, it's Fuck, awful. Man. I found most of them through the well, okay, so here's the bad part. Like you want like the more good ones, you have to do some of the sub stories. The difference between Kiwami the two and zero. Yeah, no, not the platinums. That's the actual that's the actual story for the for the cabaret. I'm saying if you do separate side stories, like in zero, you can pick up girls. And these girls really? have like yeah, and they have native yeah. stats that are that make them the best for like party or That's chatting cool. or dancing or love or cute or whatever. You yeah, know what I mean? I've just been I've been I like more more fucking sub stories pop up, and I don't like that. Like I wish they were just all available like right there. Yeah, it's it's, it's I think I was talking to Grant about that because I was like, oh, I want to go. I wanted a plat 
Swami too. Yeah. And then he was like, but Mahjong, I'm like, never mind then. Uh, yeah, bro. Yeah, but yeah that, this, this game is impossible for us to fucking to plat. He did tell me that, yeah, you can only do certain sub-stories during, during certain chapters of the game. I'm like, oh, that's really Yeah, cool. and plus, like, you gotta switch back and forth between Sultanbori and Kamurocho. Yeah. To, to actually f- find all the sub-stories. So it, it's all right. There's like pros and cons, you know. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't like that aspect where I have to, I can I have to switch back and forth to see like, kind of wish they would should just show all my sub stories available like on the map instead of looking them up. Yeah. I, but even though that is a perk, like to see which ones are available on the map, you get you can get that pretty early on, which I I I, I appreciate that. Um, let me, yes, let me ask you, that was it, it just it just yeah. takes it. I I hate that like my, the fucking the XP that you get just caps out at nine nine nine, when clearly like you need more than that. Uh, we did get those trailers for the Pokemon games Gen Four remake and Arceus. Finally got to look at what the gameplay is for that one. Yeah, I'll say for Arceus, I was like, oh okay, so it's it's literally just the same Pokemon, but you but you the trainer can get attacked as well. Kind of like really the only difference, right? I'm about ready to, to get bodied by Ursaring and Lich yeah, I'm about to box out a fucking Dreffer, dude. Let's just go, dude. Which side of you is the real one? I will say I I still kind of like the idea of them recycling Pokemon, right? Giving them different designs and saying like, well, this is this region's version of Pokemon, right? Because we saw the Growlithe in Arceus. It's not Sawsbuck. It's the the deer from Gen Four. He has like a different form. I was like, oh, that looks pretty cool. I only like the Growlithe in the now that Basculin has a fucking ghost evolution. That shit's sick, dude. We got another trailer here. It was for uh, Netflix. Uh, a new CG show coming out. To my surprise, it is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. And that's, you know, I'm surprised because we just got Masters of the Universe Revelation. I didn't think they were going to be coming out with another show right out of the gate. This is the one there. This is the one we really wanted. Yeah, so I'll just say I haven't watched Masters of the Universe Revelation yet, and the main reason was because of all the hate I heard, and like the main premise of what's going on with the characters. And I okay, I'll get Kevin Smith's point. It's called Masters of the Universe. It, that doesn't mean it's all about He Man, but everyone's here for He Man. We get the trailer for He Man. And Masters of the Universe. I'm like, wait a minute. I grew up watching the 2003 He-Man and the <laughs> Masters of the Universe. Right, I was there for He-Man. And I uh, watched the trailer. And I got to say, it looks great. Um, I like the art style that they're going with the 3D. Right, They're just going full ham. Like, look at these toys we're going to sell, dude. It looks fun. Uh, but I guess, I guess it's to be expected, right, that the uh, voice cast is not going to be the same as uh, the ones in kevin smith's show so that's also going to be interesting we're gonna have two sets of voice actors for the same characters in the same year and not mark hamill coming back for skeletor and i thought it looked familiar uh uh, part of the animation team they worked on uh, the clone wars for star wars and uh, i was like i always had a i always had an affinity to that art style you know it was unique and it kind of fits over there that's cool that's dropping september 16th so I'm going to be looking forward to checking that one out. You mentioned Star Wars. Hey, uh, the, those Star Wars anime teasers that we got a while back. Remember those? Uh, Trigger did one. That shit mm. looks great. Uh, great. Yeah, Star Wars Visions. We finally got a time frame of when that's coming out. It was, yeah, for this year, it's going to be a total of nine episodes. I think it was December, right? That's what they said. I just really want to see the Trigger one, dude. But I, mean, yep. I, think, I think it's just a really good idea in general, like getting all different kinds of animation studios working on it. Got me sold on Trigger. And so, like, it's canon or it's not canon? Or it's uh, September 27th. Uh, no, it's not canon. This is going to be similar to What If over on Marvel. Like, these are just um, stories from just Japanese animated studios that they would want to do. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I think that's that's uh, an interesting idea to do with Star Wars. But yeah, man, like you guys said, great idea. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched the other quote-unquote Star Wars anime. It was like a bunch of little shorts recapping each uh, episode like each of the movies and uh, it had a nice little um the art style was great for that one too so it's cool to see that they want to push for anime and it makes sense it'd be from japan right because they're so focused on making sure the action looks amazing i mean come on like the trigger stuff 
that just somebody on Twitter said like it looks stupid and I'm here for it, man. Let's go. Right on, man. And then um, I didn't see this, but it was brought to my attention that Yashahime, right? Season two is dropping this year, and it is going to be getting a manga adaptation. And I was like, okay, this is cool, because um, you know, last episode I mentioned like would rather read than watch. Uh, so, but this will be available. That'll be something. But my, my only downside to it is that like, oh, it's not being drawn by Takahashi. It's going to be drawing by a different mangaka who is. Um, Takashi Shina, and uh, just reading his other works, I'm like, oh, I've never read these. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, his art, his art style is good, but I was like, ah, oh, but since they stuck with Rumiko Takahashi's art style in the anime, I would kind of like to see that in manga, because, you know, the way she uh, does her drawings, I, I like them. Yeah, so that'll be coming out later this year. I think it's after... Yeah, it'll be after when season two premieres. And they said that there's going to be a little bit more going on in the manga than the anime. So there's going to be some slight differences in there. Yeah, so far I'm still liking it. I haven't, I haven't picked it up since the last time, last episode. But yeah, it's time to watch. Um, and of course it'll be in Shonen Sunday. And that's uh, where Inuyasha was being published. I know you watched it, uh, Adam. I don't know if you watched it, Oscar. But the final Evangelion movie came out to the West... Uh, on Amazon, 3.0, 1.0, and we decided to get together and watch 1.1. I really liked 3.0 plus 1.0. I was telling Jerry this the other day, I was like, Neon Genesis is one of the first animes I've ever watched in my life, so it's pretty near and dear to me. And to have to wait for this last, you know, movie to come out, it just, it gave me everything I wanted and so much more, but man... That budget for that movie is out of the ballpark. Like, it's just, like, the last half, it just gets bonkers. And it's just so good. It's so crisp. It just is a great time. I highly recommend it. Definitely going to watch it again a couple times. I also need the physical for it. It's just, it's too good, man. Like, it wrapped it up in a way that was just perfect. Now, was the last movie it? Like that's it. It had a clear, cons- it had a clear, concise ending. Yeah, yeah, dude, that's it. <clears throat> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm very eager to finally see how it ends. Like I. Yeah, I don't, I don't, couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. Yeah, I, I, I wanted, I wanted the watch party, but I, I was sitting here. I was like, I'm, I can't wait anymore. I need to see it. I mean, it does do like a pretty nice recap of every single movie before. Yeah. It. I would have, re- I would have rather watched them all like, in succession before I got to the end. I gotta ask this question. Like, you might... I don't know if they ever address it in the movies or not, Adam, but my whole thing... The whole thing I always had a problem with was, like, oh, it's just it's just a time loop. It's just a never-ending loop for Evangelion. I'm like, but... Do they ever explain that? Yes. I don't, I don't want to say too much, but yes. Okay. The answer is yes. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back soon. We'll, we'll go more depth about it at some point. But uh, I'd still recommend you guys check out the manga, too. I know you need to brush up on it, Adam, right? Because it's been a while. Yeah, yeah, it, it's been a long time. So I I started it, I think, uh, yesterday. So I plan to burn through that this week. Dog, I, I went through that whole thing in two days. I don't even remember sleeping. I just remember how <laughs> fucking, like, how fucking absorbed I was into this series when I started <laughs> reading it. Yeah, dude, I, that's exactly where I was at before. And that's where I was like, okay, I'm going to find it on my phone. I'm going to leave it here and, like, go to the first page and not read anything because I know if I start... I'm not putting my phone down, so that's <laughs> why so I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Honestly, in the manga, I think really starts getting really better for me after Sinji leaves the first time. Like that whole little, basically everything that happened in the first part of the movie that we watched. Yeah. As soon as you pass that point in the manga, that's when everything is just like, oh, fuck, so good. It, it, it really makes me wonder why no one, like all the conversations I hear about Evangelion, the manga's never mentioned. Don't, I'm like I don't understand why. Maybe because people just don't want to read it, or what? People no, because people don't read manga, dude. Exactly. Yeah. You know, people yeah, rather watch. I mean, watch right. something. Yeah, because I remember, I remember on Super Beast, uh, they were trying, they were breaking down like the first trailer for Thrice Upon a Time, and then you see that kid, and then it's snowing, and Pat's like, "Do I have to read the fucking manga now to understand <laughs> what's going on?" For real. <laughs> the only other news with Evangelion is uh, I think we mentioned a while ago. When it got announced that uh, G Kids, I think, is the 
distributor. Uh, they got the rights for the OG anime, not the new voice cast, right? That's on Netflix for the show. And that they're coming to Blu-ray, finally, for the first time ever, right? All 26 episodes and the two movies that go along with it are going to be on Blu-ray. And we got more info. It'll be in um, December. Limited quantity, only 5K, which uh, kind of sucks because, you know, that's just going to vanish. Only 5K? Yeah, only 5,000 I'm about to copies, beat up man. all the other emo kids on the way to the store, dude. You already know. <laughs> yeah, man. Captain had a hot topic for the fucking week. But I guess that makes sense because I know uh, 1.1 and um, 2.22, they're, like, super hard to get for the Blu-rays, right? I, every single time I get into Mecca's, man, I, I I always keep telling myself we should really have like one of those watch parties for Big O. This I'm down for that o. too. I'm down for Big I o. have it. Hey, they I have it on YouTube. Do. Oh, sh- oh, down. is it? No. Oh. Yeah, it's right? on YouTube, bro. Uh, that'll wrap us up for it. the week, guys. Webtoons didn't happen. It'll be probably this Wednesday. I'll upload it, so we'll be pushing the manga review to Friday. And uh, there was a. New Marvel talk last week, and then there will be a new one this week as well. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments, unversepodcastgmail.com. Any questions or comments, we'll love to talk about it. And then uh, you can follow us at Unverse Podcast anywhere on social media. Uh, like a, like Oscar pointed out, yeah, I'll be back streaming uh, for No More Heroes 3 for sure. I might do some late night streams uh, with some Death Stranding just to kill the time. And uh, that's twitch.tv, Negator7. Jerry, what are you doing over there, man? I'm playing Skyrim right now. Oh, 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 my bad. No, no. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> All right. Yeah. Caught yeah, in uh, 4K, fucking, dude. I don't know. Back and forth. I, I don't know. I've been fucking trying to figure out what else to play besides Dark Souls and Batman. Because Batman is fucking... It's always copyright, dude. That, that music in there doesn't like oh, it. Oh, damn. Is it really? Yeah. Jerry, you know what we could play? What? Uh, let's let's stream a co-op Skyrim, bro. I was also thinking about Apex too, dude. But uh, uh, Twitch.tv is Jerry Mecca. A really quick uh, quick shout out uh, for a uh, certain uh, individual that we follow who plays Apex. Uh, God like Ducky, definitely check him out. He's fucking fire when it comes to Apex. He's one of our good homies, brother. So, all right, guys, we're going to get out of here. Uh, congratulations to Mega Ren. His Kickstarter ended for his new album, and he was 400% funded. So that's great. We'll end uh, today's episode with some more Mega Ren. Oh, and hey, it's episode 200. Situation ah! snafu. Alien racing can have my rap crew. To get them back, I got permission to do what I have to. The gear is 2300. I hunt kaiju who don't want to be hunted. And stick long swords in their stomach. I'm a road beast. Roll deep on your street at a slow creep and throw heat at those who oppose me. The intergalactic champ. Brandishing weapons through a narrow spectrum. All of my recon is dead. I reckon we all in. And I was crestfallen. But what happened in New New Orleans? A foreign alien ordinance is coming for it. They say they gon' drop. The bomb looks like a job for Mega Ran and Dr. Octagon. Dr. Rabbit, use any weapon, catch a space chick pregnant. My NASA flight, aerodynamic adventure, Ultraman spectacular, giant aliens destroying monsters like lobsters. The colossal region, I'm on a ship on the weekend, asteroid glide. She show a cleavage, just scooping the galaxy maneuver. I'm Jackie, I'm Stuart, rolling through the black hole, influent with influence. Woke up from cryo sleep in a sonambulator, exposed to gamma rays, may grow antlers later. Horny in space, huh? Business as usual, used to play last Starfighter at my cubicle before getting assigned to my team at 19. Now the finest machines are intertwined with my genes. I combine my mind to read alien thought patterns, which comes in handy if you don't want your spots flattered. But I'd rather star travel the heavenly clusters with space cougars like... Beverly Crusher, so if the other crew start asking where are they, tell them the captain's log had a star date. Huh. Alien Raiders did not defense down. defense down. Guess we're the last line of defense now. Defense now. Scanners is tweaking because it's intense now. Intense now. Tell them to give it up or get it down. 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 Tell them to give it up or get it down. 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 Tell them to give it up or get it down.